If you've watched my videos before, you might have noticed that in my poly bar I have my CPU temperature. And today I thought I would show you guys how to actually access these hardware sensors, not just for your CPU, but also for your GPU or anything else that has these sensors built into them as well. And I also want to show you guys the differences that exist between the AMD and the Intel platforms for measuring CPU temperatures because it's not actually a standardized process. There's a couple of different ways it can be measured. And especially on the AMD side, it is a little bit more complicated. So I thought I would also explain to you guys what the information you get back actually means. So the program we're going to be using today is called Sensors, and it belongs to a package called LM Sensors. And then towards the end of the video, I'll also include some stuff about reading things like your memory timings and your memory capacity. This won't be used for actually reading your memory usage, but it will still give you some information about your memory hardware. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually go and install LM Sensors. So on Arch Linux at least, it'll be available within your standard repo. So sudo pacman-s lm underscore sensors. And it's a pretty small package, so if that's something you care about, then it's not something you really need to worry too much about. So all we're going to do is just press yes on this, and now we've got it installed. Now, depending on your hardware configuration, sensors might just work perfectly fine out of the box. So on this desktop and also on my laptop, I didn't have to do anything else. It just worked straight away. It picked up all of the hardware it should have picked up. But if it doesn't, then what you can do is run sensors detect. Now, even if it does pick up all of the information you think it should pick up, you should still run sensors detect just in case there's a hardware sensor you didn't know about. For example, some Wi-Fi cards have a temperature sensor built into them. Some M.2 hard drives do. So maybe there's some information there that you didn't know about that running sensors detect will pick up. So if we just run sensors detect, sensors dash detect, now you have to run this as the root user. So if we just do sudo exclamation exclamation, that'll run the last command we ran with sudo. And now just stick my password in. What you have to do here is just press enter on everything. Don't change anything here because some people have had problems where if they change any of the settings in here, something just stops working. So just press enter on everything. You don't need to worry about anything. Just go through all the prompts, just press enter. Don't really think about it unless you know exactly what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, feel free to change these options, but otherwise just press enter and let it use the default options because otherwise something might stop working. So just go through everything. It will take a while depending on how much you actually have in your system. And I'm just gonna keep going and there we go. Now we're done. And as you can see, it's generated a new configuration file in this location right here. So if we just cat that out, conf dot D LM underscore sensors. So as you can see, there's not really much information here because we didn't actually change any of the default settings. So it didn't actually need to save any of this information. And now if we run sensors again, you'll see we have all of the same information because on my system, I had already run it earlier. So with this desktop, I only have three groups of sensors. So I have the NVMe-PCI-0300, which is my M.2 drive. I have AMD GPU-PCI-0900, which is obviously my AMD GPU and K10 temp PCI dash 00C3, which even though that's a really weird name, that is my Ryzen 3600X. So going from the top to the bottom, we have my M.2 drive. So with my M.2 drive, there's only one sensor on it, and that is for the composite temperatures. So this is just a general temperature for the drive. I'm not sure exactly where it's located, but you could treat this as just the temperature of your drive. So in this case, mine is 31.9 degrees Celsius. Now moving on to the AMD GPU, we have a couple of different things in here. So we have VDDGFX, we have Fan1, we have Edge, and we have Power1. Now Fan1 is obviously the speed that the fans are spinning at. The Edge is the actual temperature. The Power1 is the wattage of the CPU. If you have a GPU with a more complex power delivery method, there might be a Power1, a Power2, so on and so forth. But for my GPU, there's only one of these. And the VDD GFX is basically the voltage of the GPU. Now, moving on to the CPU, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So as we can see, we have vCore, vSoc. These are both voltages. We have TCTL, TDI, and TCCD1, which are all temperatures. And then we have iCore and iSoc, which are both amperages. So on the AMD side, it's a little bit more complicated than it is on Intel. So if we go over to this picture I have of my Intel system, as you can see, so there's a bunch of other information here, but the one that we care about is the core temp right here. So as you can see, we have package ID zero, which is basically a general temperature of the CPU. We have core zero and we have core one. So the system that I took this picture on was on a dual core system. So 
On the Intel side, using sensors, you can very easily get the temperature of each individual core. The same can't be said for the AMD CPUs. I think there is a way to get individual core temperatures, but I'm not too sure about how to do it. And from what I've seen, you can't seem to do it through sensors, at least with the default setting. So if you need to get individual core temperatures, then I'm not really sure how to do it, but generally you just need a temperature of the entire package. So on the Intel side, that would be the package ID zero. But which of these temperatures should you be using as just a general temperature on the AMD side? So what we have here is the T control temperature, which from what I understand is the temperature of the T junction of your CPU, which I believe is the hottest part of your CPU, plus an offset to basically make sure the fans across the entire AMD lineup will perform consistently. Then we have the die temperature, which is the temperature of the actual CPU die. And then the first core complex die temperature, which on a Ryzen 3600X is the only core complex die. And I'm not really sure how core complex dies actually work. So feel free to go watch an actual hardware channel on that. This is a Linux channel. I'm just going to go by what other people say. So from what I understand, the T die temperature is the temperature you should be using if you want a general CPU temperature. So this is the temperature of the entire CPU die. So it should be good enough to use as a general temperature of the CPU. As for the vCore, vSoc, iCore and iSoc, I wasn't actually able to find any information on these. So if any of you guys are more hardware focused and you know what these actually are, feel free to leave a comment down below because I'll be very appreciative of this information and I'm sure someone else listening to this would be as well. I can clearly see that there's some sort of voltage and amperage reading, but I'm not really sure what they're actually reading from. If I was to guess though, I would say that vCore is the voltage being sent to the CPU cores. VSOC is the voltage being sent to the CPU socket. iCore is the amperage being sent to the CPU cores. And then iSOC is the amperage being sent to the CPU socket. But once again, I'm not an electrical engineer. That's not my forte. So if someone knows what those are actually reading from, feel free to leave that comment down below. So if we look at my laptop screenshot for just a bit, we can see a bit of extra information here that isn't present on my desktop. So we have things like IWL Wi-Fi, which is basically my Wi-Fi card. So what we have here is basically the temperature of that card. Now, as I was saying before, some Wi-Fi chips actually will have hardware sensors built into them. Some won't. It really depends on what you've actually got. I'm guessing it's probably going to be more common on a laptop to have the sensors built in. I'm not too sure though. I haven't really looked too much into it. And this third one here we have is BAT0, which you can probably guess is for my batteries. So we have the in voltage, which is 17.10 volt. And the reason why this isn't zero is because at the time I had my laptop plugged in. And then we have the current in amperage, which I'm guessing is zero because I was running off of wall power. If I was to unplug the laptop, I would presume this value would go up and this value would go down, but I'm not entirely sure. So if for whatever reason you don't like seeing this output directly on your terminal, there are some graphical front ends you can use for sensors. So we have things like P-Sensor and X-Sensors. Now, I don't really feel any reason to use this because the only reason I ever bring up sensors is basically to get this CPU temperature up here. So I don't really see much of a use for it. But if you'd rather have something more akin to the hardware monitors you'd see on Windows, then you can try out something like P-Sensor or X-Sensor. And there are also ones that are built specifically for some desktop environments. So I presume these ones would be even fancier than what you get with things like P-Sensor and X-Sensors. There is also a bit of configuration you can do for sensors as well. So one thing you might run across is CPU temperatures that are being reported higher than they should have been. So apparently on this motherboard right here, all of the core temperatures were being reported 20 degrees higher than they should have been. So what you can do is basically add a little bit to your configuration file and that'll basically say force the temperature down a little bit. Now obviously if the temperature is being reported correctly and you change this value, then your values just stop being meaningful. So obviously don't do that. But if you need to force the temperature down because there is a known hardware sensor issue, then you can go and do that. You can also do things like rename the label. So for example, if you don't like that we have things like TDI and VCore and VSOC, you can go and give these proper names. Feel free to come have a look through the LM sensors page on the Arch Wiki, but I'm not gonna be going into that today. It's pretty straightforward how this works. So instead, let's move over to how to get the hardware info for your memory modules. Now for this, we can't use sensors. We have to go and download another package. So what we're gonna do here is download the package called I2C Tools. So once again, we can just download it with Pacman. So sudo pacman-s I2C dash tools. So this is a dash, not an underscore this time. And once again, this is also a very small package as well. So we'll just go and install this. And what we have to do first up is run modprobe eeprom. 
So if we go sudo mod probe eeprom, this is basically the kernel module that it needs to read out this information. So just run that. And I've already got it running, so this really shouldn't do too much. And what we can do now is actually run the program that we're going to be using. And the program we need to run is called decode dims. So decode dash dims. Now, if you have a couple of memory modules, you probably want to output this to something like less. So we'll do that now, just so we can actually scroll through the information. I'm not going to go into all of this information here, because there is a ton of it. We have things like where the dim is located on your motherboard, the type of memory it is, the SPD revision, the actual module speed, the size of the module, how the module is laid out. There's a ton of other information here, which if you're really into the hardware information of your system, probably all sounds great, but I have no idea what half this information is. We have things like the CPU timings, which I am way too afraid to even bother touching, but if you're into messing with your CPU timings, you can view all of that information in here. And there's some other basic information about the hardware as well. There's some physical characteristics of it. Obviously, when it comes to this stuff right here, it will depend on whether the memory manufacturer actually reports this information correctly. But on my system, it says that my module height is 32 millimeters, which that sounds about right. Uh, the module thickness is about two millimeters for the front, two millimeters for the back, which also sounds roughly about right as well. And as you can see, we have some information here not being reported correctly. So we don't have the module manufacturer or the part number. So they are Corsair sticks of some description. I don't remember what they are. They're some of the low height dims. I can't remember exactly what they were called. <clears throat> they were memory modules though, so I didn't really care. I just chucked whatever in there. And then we have the second memory module as well. So one thing you can use this for is to make sure that all your memory modules are actually being detected within your operating system because sometimes they might appear within your BIOS but won't appear to your OS. Now, this isn't too common. Usually if there's a problem like this, it'll be caught in your BIOS but from time to time, it might show up in your operating system. So you might have a situation where for whatever reason, you have higher frequency memory which is supported by your motherboard and is supported by your BIOS but for whatever reason, when you get to the operating system, it just doesn't work properly. And you could use a piece of software like this to make sure it is properly being detected. Now, as I said, you probably won't have a situation like this. It'll mainly just be used to make sure your memory timings are properly appearing within your operating system. But there could still be a situation like that that does occur. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. Now, as I said, I mainly just look at my CPU temperature because for me, I don't really see much value in the rest of the information. And that's mainly because I have no interest in doing any overclocking. If you're into overclocking and you want to do your overclocking on Linux, then having this information is going to be absolutely vital because what you could do is you could try to overclock your CPU or overclock your memory. And then when you get to the operating system, it doesn't even detect that you've tried to overclock it and it just tries to run at the stock speeds. To actually work out that something like that is happening, you're going to need tools like this to work out exactly what's happening with the sensors on your actual hardware. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Peter D, Rode, Tony Donald, Kulari, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want. And I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, I'm going to go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a T available on Library and YouTube and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, I'm going to check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. I just hit my uh, shock mount, so hopefully that wasn't too annoying. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>